my therapist always says, take care of little Nia. Mm -hmm. So when you see this photo of yourself, what, what feelings do you have? My grandmother, uh, was very religious. Mm -hmm. She made me go to church and Sunday school and, and Easter speeches and all that. I didn't realize it then. I just went because I was supposed to be going. Yeah. Right. But it came to some points in my life where things just happened that was so real that there was nowhere else to go but with God. What was the activation moment of trauma for you? I think there were several things. I think the the first was being left with a babysitter. There was a woman that was older than me. I mean, it was older and and her, you know, touching and doing things to me that don't normally happen to kids. Right? Like molesting. Right, basically. Yeah. So I, I was introduced to sex at a very really young age. Really young. Yeah. Second thing was that I had this lady that lived next door to us in an apartment. She was married to this guy. They had two kids. Yeah. And it was around my age. And I used to hang out with them. And I was there one day. And I remember like it was yesterday. They got into an argument. Yeah. And me, me and the little boys was playing in the room and I heard them, you know, and I heard that saying before, I, yeah, you, I, you wait till I get back. I'll be right back. And I kind of looked at the boys. I'm like, yo, you know, and, and sure enough, he came running upstairs and he went in the closet, right? Mm -hmm. And when he was going in the closet, he was thumbing through the closet. And I saw it when he pulled it out, it was like a big, like had to be like a silver 357. Oh and my God. And I looked God. at them and I immediately was like, yo, we got to hide. Yeah, and but why did you know to hide? Because I had been around that before growing up. Mm -hmm. So I went and climbed under the sink mm -hmm. in the bathroom and hid. Mm -hmm. And I heard some yelling and all I heard was pow, pow, pow. He killed his, the wife? He, he didn't kill her, he shot her like four times. Oh my God. Right, and he ran, left us there. My mom and dad came looking for me um, eventually. They found me under the sink when the police and everything was there. But I just, you know, they just stuck with me, right? Mm -hmm. And before I was eight, mm -hmm. I had already accepted this is this is the norm, right? I was already desensitized. And At was, eight years old? Yeah. I was already thinking like, okay, this this is what life is. And it gave me this thing to like always like protect myself, right? Yeah, yeah. Because nothing think, felt safe. Right. Do you have siblings at this My point? brother died when we was younger. What did it do to your mother? I mean, my mother had a, like, very toxic relationship. You and your mom? Yes. My sister's my little sister, right? Yeah. But I call her my little big sister because she's probably the only person that can talk sense into me. My relationship with my father was probably very toxic. Oh, and, so? Well, because he wasn't there. Okay. I didn't have the example of what a family was supposed to look like. Right. The first thing before you marry someone, it's like, well, what is his relationship like with his mother? I feel like my mother, she, she, it came from her not being raised right. Very violent, very verbal, very cold. I just remember that I was kind of on the outside because I looked so much like my father. Uh -huh. They they divorced and all I know is my father just told me straight up here, never trust another woman again, which made me go, shit. Well, man. what was that about? Because whatever happened between them uh -huh. hurt him. So right. one was not feeling safe and protected when you were molested. Right. Two was a void of love and compassion and acceptance from your mom. Yeah. And then the third one was, okay, now I'm going to completely disconnect from myself here because there is no love here. And I'm going to go to the streets mm -hmm. and I'm going to hustle and I'm going to make money and I'm going to prove that I'm, I'm worthy of this love and I'm going to be somebody. Right. When I left my mother's house, I had to be around 13, 14 yeah. maybe. Yeah. And the reason why I left because she pulled a gun on me. Right. Okay. And, and basically told me like, you know, you go either... Do what I say, I'm going to take you out of this world type thing. I was just like, yo, I'm Why was she so hard? I don't really know her father like that. And as, yeah. old, as I get older, I start to realize that you just never know what somebody went through. You know, one thing I love about my mother, she was spicy. Uh-huh. Like, she, she, got, she got a tongue that can cut half the world down. I love it. So I'm raising boys. Right. It's very interesting when you are trying to get that young boy to be a man and to go out into the world. And 
I would say that I do a good job of being present with them. Right. But then there's that part of me where I'm like, I don't want to raise mama's boys. I got an option to go to this boot camp. And in that camp, I was able to get my GED, learn life skills, mm -hmm. and a bunch of different things. It was my first time being pulled away from my environment, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it definitely gave me time to think about you know, what I wanted to do in my life, mm. where I wanted to go. And it was a different type of experience because it was like a lot of uh, structure, mm -hmm. something that I wasn't used to. And it's crazy because I'll never forget, um, it was it was uh, one of the times that I was there and I was getting ready to get out. But I remember um, we went on a field trip because it was near water. And I remember just being on a military ship, like, you know, because the waves are crashing against it. I was just like, I don't want to go back home. I might just should jump. Over. Really? Yeah. And I, I, I thought about it a few times. It was so real. That's the, probably the only time in my life where I ever felt that low, that yeah. I felt like this could be the end for me. Yeah. And, you know, I buckled back down. I came home um, and I definitely turned my hustle up. Like I, 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 I just went about it as a business. And this is around the time that I had my son. Hmm. And, and, and he made me focus on becoming a man. We are born as beings meant to be here to love. Right, that's the crazy thing though, because as I sit here at 46, I can tell you that. Yeah. But I can't honestly tell you that I've experienced love, like right. especially non-conditional, like I couldn't tell you that. It was always something to it. Right. Well, maybe you had to get open to it first to heal it, to attract it. Well, I mean, you know, when you're, when you're coming up in a family, right, yeah. there should be at least a baseline of health. Yes. Right? And, and, and just healthy, yes. you know, just yes. conversation, right? Mm -hmm. And I can say that I probably got more love in the streets than I did when I was. And that's one of the reasons why I love my grandmother so much, because she gave, she was the only person that I can recall. My dad's folks was a little more common. Yeah. My mom's folks, they weren't playing the radio. Is your mom still alive? No, my mom passed. My mom did passed to... during COVID. She had dementia. And so my dad, same. Yeah. My dad passed away the day after Kobe Bryant. The crazy thing is when she was there and I was I was going to visit her and when she had dementia, it was a little crazy because I couldn't really, because I, I was trying to get to a space where I can forgive her. I used to try to talk to her. And then, you know, my mom's smart, even if she had dementia. It's like when I started talking about the hard stuff, she started like, you know, acting like she don't really understand what I'm she saying. She didn't want to talk about she it. Didn't want to talk about it was too painful for her. Yeah. You know, I love my mother. You know what I'm saying? Of course you do. And I think I spent most of my life, which is probably one of the reasons why I'm successful. Yeah. It was trying to prove that I'm enough. And every time I got to a milestone, there was no fulfillment there, right? Because, because she I'm, didn't acknowledge. She didn't acknowledge it. I can say this, you know, lately I've definitely been on my journey, so I've done a lot of work. One of my uncles just passed, and he's one of my favorite uncles. Everybody who knows my music know I talk about him. He's my first uncle that gave me $20, mm -hmm. and, and, and I flipped <laughs> it a zillion times, and that's how I'm here. Yeah. And his name was Bo, Bo Slick, and he gave me his uh, disability check. Well, he passed uh, last month. Oh, and that must have been tough. It's crazy because I went to the funeral home in our hometown and I went and saw him, right? And I hadn't seen him in a while. And, uh, and I saw, he had a smirk on his face and I was like, live it slick, he's still giving him hell. Boy, he think it's funny. Yeah. He gone, but it's crazy because he was laying in the exact same place, the last place I saw my mom. And so on the way back, I tell my driver, I give him an address and I say, yo, take me to this address and we pull up. It's like an old church. And my sister has it set up nice out there. When well, we set it up nice, where, where my mom's buried, we got like a bench and all these things. She has a crown oh. on her stuff. So it's really beautiful. Yeah. Right? And it's peaceful. And I went out there because I had some life changes that was going on. And I just, I wrote her a letter on the way there. And I sat down and I read the letter to her. I told her about her new granddaughter, how, yeah. how, how amazing, beautiful she was. I told her that working on my relationship with my son mm -hmm. and, and we're in a kind of 
cool place. I told her about my middle daughter and how how beautiful she's turning now. I told her about, you know, my life changes and the things that, you know, that I'm concerned about, some of my fears, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, you know, and I basically forgave her. Ooh, that's good. And my basis of the letter was to tell her, you know, everything that was going on in my life and, you know, the, the, even if she's not proud, I understand. What did you say in the moment of forgiveness? I understand what it's like to raise a rebellious kid. I understand what it's like to have your own wounds, mm-hmm. that your work that she need to do, mm-hmm. right? And she didn't get a chance to do that. And I understand that maybe she had a different way of loving me that I didn't understand. Right. Mm-hmm. And 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 because my mom the type of you, if I go to the basketball court and get jumped, she gonna take me around there to fight everybody one on one. Me too. Right. I'm <laughs> taking my saying? kids too. She's like, come on, him first, the second, and him I third. got your back, right. and the right. Vaseline's in the car, and, and I'm gonna it. take my earrings off there you and go. let's let's go. Yeah, that's her. But do you understand that that was her way of loving you? Well, this is what happened. Um, and 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 this is I'm gonna keep it a buck. This was like I was in L.A., so this was like maybe two nights ago um, or early morning meditation, meditating morning. And um, I was meditating and I had a vision that I saw my mom and I was talking to her, I was just talking and I just heard, I just asked her, I said, you know, I forgive you, but can you forgive me? For? Not for taking what she gave me and embodying that, right? Mm-hmm. And having that same type of energy. Mm-hmm. Because when my mother died, I didn't I didn't grieve, right? I you didn't, didn't I didn't all. cry. I didn't not at all. Nothing. And I asked her to forgive me for not sending her off right. One thing I learned about life now is that. I, even if somebody treats you wrong, right? Mm-hmm. It's 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 how you react or respond. Absolutely. Right. That's so been I the biggest lesson for right. me. And I can't look at what she did to me and then react, right? My response is 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 what we had, and I and I promise you, like I sat there and I explained to her, you know, the things that affected me and why I couldn't connect at that moment. And that, you know, she asked me for forgiveness, but I wanted her to forgive me. It's like we left in a gray space, right? Where? She doesn't know how I feel. I don't know how she feels. I promise it was like this, um, this pain, like it was like somebody like stabbing you in the mm-hmm. chest with a with a pitchfork or something. And and it was just like hurt so bad. And when she when she told me that. She understood. I started to feel it dissolve. When you get to a place where you can forgive, right. even when there's pain involved, right? That's freedom. I, it's it's so tricky because I I, tr- I promise you, like I'm a Libra, so I'm like a very balanced and fair person. But ninety nine point nine percent of the people I've led in my life have 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 wrong or did something. And I just was like, wow. And, and, and it, it could be anyone from anything. So it was always just that. And I go back to that instance when I was in that, under that cabinet. You, you, you feel what I'm yes, saying? It's I just do. like, you, you, you feel that. And I imagine going through that, you know, throughout your life. And that's what I have to tell people. Like, I don't think people understand that. It's like when you tell people you lost this many people, they look at it like you're exaggerating. But it's, you got to really think about it. It's, let's just say Tupac. Tupac was 20 five, six when he died. Mm-hmm. Imagine how, people, how many people he lost if he ever sat down and told you, I'm double his age. I live past him. So I've lived four or five different lives. As you had these different versions of self, mm-hmm. right? Did you feel connected to the experience or did you have an awareness to say, I know that what I'm doing is wrong, but this is what I have to do to survive? Well, this is the thing. I learned my gifts early on. Yeah. I was a visionary yeah. because I always see things. And I noticed that I was a disruptor because I, I find myself going with the not so popular decision. Uh-huh. You know, 
but I know what's right in my heart and I'm a problem solver and uh -huh. going backwards. Like God gave me a gift. I understand that because he kept me safe. He kept me alive. He kept me free and he made me successful in a sense. I hadn't gave anything back to him yet, which is why I lost my voice because I told my vocal cords in the beginning of my career, which is why I said- How did you do that? Not knowing how to perform and tore my, oh, my vocal cords. Did you have to have an operation? Yeah, and I didn't have insurance. I got three Lamborghinis and no insurance. Yeah, I had see, that's- I had insurance on my cars and didn't have insurance on me. I had to pay for it with a brown paper bag. After that, I did my prayer and he got me out of it. And then I um, got hit with uh, Bell's palsy. And my face was crooked. That's like one of the last time I talked to my mother because I told her I was scared. I was like, I don't, I don't think I, my face will ever go back again because it was like crooked. And but do you remember what happened when? Because you know that's a that's a emotional nerve. Well, thing. I wasn't taking care of myself. Uh -huh. I was drinking Cristal for breakfast and Waffle oh, House. Oh my god! Yeah, I was two sixty. I was I was just in bad shape. I, I got an album out. This doing well. Yeah, I'm going around the world. I'm at war. You know what I'm saying? I'm losing friends left and right. I'm at war with people who have, you know, at the time, way more money than I did and more influence and power. Yeah. And it's like, I'm just holding my own, right? Again, under that sink. And it's just like the same people that told me that it was my brothers and now they're trying to kill me. Like, imagine that, right? And this ain't, this ain't like around the corner. This is state to state, right? Yeah, so yeah, now yeah. I'm dealing with all this and I'm trying to navigate it. And, um, you know, God got me out of that again. Look, I think it's really important for black men and black women to have these conversations. I don't I think we have these conversations enough. I and I think it's a really tragic place when there's a person who's afraid of intimacy, right? Because intimacy mm. is the trigger in which we can actually start to unpack ourselves. Yes. Are you guarded? Because you seem guarded. Yeah, very. One thing is my relationships have been very much on the surface when, when I started losing a lot of people, right? Cause you don't want to get to Are you talking about love relationships or homies, like uh, people? Uh, homies and then even love relationships I've been in where, you know, people just ain't right. You do realize, and I've had to learn this too, cause I can be guarded as well, right? right? Is if you are carrying that, right. you attract that. This is so if someone else is guarded or someone else is not being their full authentic self, it's because in some sort of way, we haven't settled in. Um, and 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 I think it's really hard to do when you're in the industry that we're in because right. everything about this industry tells you you have to be a certain version of yourself that people expect you to be. But see, that's the thing. See, I, I'm, I go even farther back. Yeah. Because my situations are dire, right? Because if you're not guarded. Then you're dead. There you go. And, you know, if you're not guarded and you're not smart, then you end up in prison. If you're not guarded, you're not smart, then you're up in these situations where, you know, you're on the losing it. Then going into music, it didn't make it any better because now these this same type of energy now follows you're you. An but see, that's the thing. That's where the, the imposter syndrome get reversed. Yeah. Because it's not me wanting to be like them. It's them wanting to be like me. Right. I'm the truth. I ain't his daddy, his cousin, his uncle, his brother. It's, uh, I'm him. Like, there's nobody that I know that's walked this path of life that I walk that can stand while I stand and say I did the things that I did. Anybody who really has common sense knows that, right? But I want to ask you, how do you know that I'm guarded just by having this conversation? Because I'm from where you're from, and Ooh, I see him. Game talk recognized that talk. game. Talk game, that talk. game recognized game. <laughs> I see you're guarded too, though, a little bit. Just well, little I'm, bit. I'm, yeah, I am. Yeah. I'm what, guarded. What would make you guarded? Don't fuck with my kids. Mm -hmm. That's like off limits. Right. Not even a little bit. And if mm -hmm. you do, mm -hmm. you will hear from me. That comes from me not always feeling safe as little Nia right. and me not wanting my children to ever not feel like yeah, they don't it, have me active in their lives as their safety. I love my son. I think he's an amazing guy. I think he's very charismatic. I think he got all the things, but I think that the way I've tried to love him over the years was totally wrong, not his love language for him. And I think the things that I instilled in him as a youngster, you know, that doesn't serve him now. You know, I had a really um, public breakup recently. It was a wake up call for me in the sense of like, okay, you're gonna do this on your own. 
and you're going to be fine. Right. And you're not going to worry about what anyone thinks and has to say. Because the relationship was rocky for a very long time. So, Because mm. I don't believe another person can break anyone up. Right. Like, I just don't, I don't buy that, right? right? To your point with your son, I think my older son saw me trying to keep the family together. Uh. But I had to come to a place where loving myself uh, was bigger and more important than saving anybody. Well, if you can't, if you got to save your star player, if your star player is not doing good, the team Can is, we not talk players? Can we use a different, um, can we say there, like there. Stay, the best horse in the race? There, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But the reason, but the reason I know that you're guarded is because when I was in high school, I only dated drug dealers. Oh, really? Oh my God, that's where I was. I lived in South Central LA. That's what it was. Wow, I would have never thought that. Really? No. Nah. But going through your um, your trials and tribulations, like yeah. I know you're working on yourself, like we all yeah. are. Do you feel that you're okay? Like not what people are supposed to see and supposed to think uh -huh. you. I think I'm exactly where I need to be, which is some days I'm like totally good. And then other days that. I'm like, oh God, this feels like so much work. I feel that. You know, and then other days it feels like uh, women shouldn't have to be this strong. All right. I don't want to be this strong sometimes. All right. Okay, you made me cry. Yeah, I got you first. <laughs> but you're good though. No, I'm good. I mean, listen, it is what it is. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's life is a funny thing because, like, I always saw myself, my vision of myself was, um, you know, well manicured man, good skin, wedding band, plain Jane watch. So you can go wearing this right now. That's not plain and, Jane, yeah, by I know, the way. But That's I, very I reminiscent one, right? of Hustler days. <laughs> I feel, you know, That's a little, little hustlery. We're supposed to be playing Jane, but I felt a little spicy. Not even that ain't play Jane. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I don't think anybody has to, should have to be that strong. Black people have survived insurmountable obstacles. Mm. The, the journey of being black in America is not easy. Mm. And I'm not a victim to any of it, right. but I'm realistic to the journey. Right. I know how I am treated differently in certain situations. I understand that I have to raise my boys to be men. Right. I understand that I have to figure out the balance between being soft and vulnerable and open. Is that hard? Like being no, soft because that's who I want to be. That's who I really am. And but I, I would say firstly, like I would appreciate that because it's hard, you know, because women have it their, their own thing they go through. And then when you deal with men, and you you have that hard exterior, it's it's, it's hard, you right? Because we already fighting the world, you know what I'm saying? But so are we. But that's where we got to find the happy media. I didn't have enough examples in my own life to like understand what it really meant or what it really means to see a relationship between a mm. man and a woman wow. that is healthy wow. and balanced wow. and and you work through things instead of like every conversation is not an argument. Right. And I don't think black men and black women have those conversations enough. Even now we're doing the work. That don't mean everybody else is on board. And that's the crazy part. But that's the thing, they you gotta let them go. You got to let them go and you got to let them be on their own journey and you can't fight for it anymore. And you got to love them exactly where they are. Yeah. And you got to say, baby, you know what? The Whoa. hardest thing to do is to walk away from someone that Whoa. you still love. You ain't tell me and it's a pastor okay. too. <laughs> no, I'm just speaking from my own, speaking from like, you I know. I 1000% agree experience. because the hardest thing I had to do in life was walking away from everything that I knew that could support me. Right? That's right. But what was the moment that you knew you had to walk away? Something happened in, in the Bay. Somebody got killed and they tried to put it on us while I was on tour with Wiz Khalifa. They came and locked me up right here in LA. I just remember being in jail and, um, you know, I took care of everybody. A million dollar bill for everybody. $10 million. Oh my God. I'm sitting in the county jail. 
And as soon as I get in there, somebody comes to get me out and they're like, we got to get you out of here. And I'm like, no, I can't leave these people in the county jail. I got to stay here until, you know, I can get everybody out the same way we came in. Yeah. And, you know, of course, I didn't want to tell nobody how to touch my finances. Yeah. So I had to figure that part out. I ended up getting everybody out. But my point is I sat in there for two weeks until I can get everybody out. Right. The people that I had that were supposed to be in my corner, ain't nobody check on my son, my daughter, my household. Nothing. And when I got out of jail, I was at the lowest point of my life. I did everything right on this tour. I didn't take any gang members or nothing crazy. Mm-hmm. I took the people that was working. Mm-hmm. I stayed on my bus the whole time. Mm-hmm. I did everything right, and I got caught up. I had uh, Minister Farrakhan calling me every other day like, Jeezy, brother, the enemy's coming. I'm just like, what the hell is going on? So Why he, was he calling you? He called me and said, brother Jeezy, your message is changing. The enemy is coming to get you. I said, with all due respect, Mr. Farrakhan, all my enemies in my neighborhood, I'm not going back there no time soon. He said, yeah. no, the enemy. But what he was saying was that my message was changing and I was starting to educate my people. Oh, right? wow. And now here comes the enemy. And he wasn't lying. It was, it was when I got to that arena to do my show in front of 30,000 people, mm-hmm. it was my turn to go on stage. It was maybe 70 police back there waiting to take me to jail. It was a span of my life, maybe like three years, probably shortly after my first album. Like, I, I, it was shootout to shootout. It, it, like, I've been in shootouts with my dad being right there. And it's like a combo of everything. So it was a combo of the street shit I had going on before that. Yeah. There's a combo of the get money life with the, mm-hmm. these guys. And then there's a combo of just people that I just never had a liking for. They didn't have a liking for me that we just was in the same city trying to coexist. I used to get up and pick my outfit based on what I was, if I if it happened tonight, how I was going to look. Right. You were like, if I die tonight, my shit's going to be, be fly. fly. Do you realize what that does to your psyche, just leaving the house, thinking yeah. like, I got to make sure my shit is fly if I get right. killed? Boxes, everything. I want to wear the best boxes. You're like, I will socks. not have right. any holes <laughs> in my underwear. <laughs> I promise you, that was my life. I didn't, I didn't understand how I was going to even make it out, right? And that's where all the drinking came in because now I'm trying to self-soothe. I'm trying Were to- Were you an alcoholic, you think? 1,000%. Did you go to like AA or did you just- No, I just stopped. You stopped. Because my mom and my dad, they was, you know, my mom's side of the family, they drank a lot. And um, when I was leaning in on my vices, I started to notice that there was a couple of things that happened a few times where I wasn't sharp. And I was just like, okay, if I don't, if I don't stop this, I'm gonna get got. And then I would just like back away from the alcohol. And what I would do is, well, two things. The first thing is I, w- I wanted to get healthy so I got down, I dropped 60 pounds, got myself together. This was right before the recession because any time of my career before from streets is watching to the recession, which was about six years, yeah, I was out of it. Like I wasn't even, I was leading men, right? I, I went everywhere with 150, 200 people. And every city I went to, it was another 300 waiting on us. It was like, it was like a real thing. And I was leading everybody off the end of a cliff. <laughs> So you were saying that you feel like we can't connect because we're doing too much time fighting each other. Absolutely. Instead of fighting for the relationship. Or fighting for love and understanding and commitment and compassion. And But it starts with, with men feeling, you know, comfortable enough to be vulnerable and open. And that's a hard thing to ask a man to do because we were not conditioned that way. We were not, a lot of us weren't raised that way. Mm. It can be considered a sign of weakness in the same way that therapy is considered a sign of weakness. We're talking about your experiences and my experiences. We have more in common than we probably ever thought we did, right? Right. And so to me, that's the thing that makes me feel this sense of urgency to have this conversation with you, Mm. but also there's a hopefulness. Mm-hmm. There's a hopefulness that if we actually each do the work, right. we can actually come together right. because there's nothing more important to me than black people. Right. 
We are the greatness in every room. Right. We are the ones who set it off and make it happen. This we are true. the ones that create the culture. We are the artists. We are the artistes. Mm. We are the voices what? that lead the masses. But what has always hurt me to the core is why is there this dismantlement of the black family? Why isn't it that black men and black women can't sit like you and I are sitting in a space and have really open dialogues about things and, and work through the trauma? Because that's the only way we can really, really, right. really be productive. You said if it couldn't work, then you would leave. Yes. Even if there was a family, well, even if there was kids involved. If the other person mm -hmm. is not willing to do the deep, hard work, wow. then you stay. And when you stay, you have to make yourself smaller to stay, I to survive. I thousand percent agree with you. Or you may not. I think for a woman, it means you have to make yourself smaller to feel like you're fitting into right. this space with this person who's not ready yet. Right. You can still love them, by the way. Right. You can still love them. You can still wish them the best. You can still, you, I mean, you might have moments where you want to cuss somebody out. Like right. that's normal. Like we, we have feelings and emotions, but you can love people right where they are. Right. Because to me, that's really a sign of my own personal growth. If you can love the person that hurt you. Right. But you mean love them from afar. You love them from afar. Right. You wish them well. You bless them on their journey. And you hope that the next time around right. that they have the opportunity to do the work that they do the work. What happens when you're a man and, and you want nothing more than that, right? And, yeah. And that's not what you're getting on the other side. And there are kids involved, right? And there's somewhat love there. And you understand that somebody else might have their thing. Mm -hmm. But they're not taking this journey with you of healing because I think love is two people healing together and Absolutely. giving each other the space to do so. And the thing for me is, um, I you know when I when I went to visit my mother that day, I went to forgive her, but I also went to tell her that I'm gonna stand up for my for little Jay. That's right, right? The little Jay that she put in that position, and I think a lot of my healing journey especially in my real life, mm -hmm. had a lot to do with me never standing up to my mother the right way. That's right. Which made me be a certain way in real life. You're kind of all the things. Right. We say all the things you mean. I mean, like, like you, you've kind of, you're like a cat. You've kind of lived nine lives. Yeah. You've had many yeah. different versions of What's self. Up? Right. So right now, where are we? In my life, I wanted to have a family forever. Yeah. I, that's, I wanted to be that guy. I wanted to be the person. To get it right. To get it right. Me too. To I wanted it, to, to get, get it right. right to, to be right. To yes. To do all the things. And when you get in that space and you're letting your inner child down and you're not protecting them and that's making you shrink in situations like that too. Men do. Uh, yes, because if you're not appreciated, if you're met with resistance, if you're yes. met with that inner thing that somebody else has from their Thing, but that's to me, Achilles that's Hill. fixable. You got to want to do the work. I, and I agree. But you just said clearly, yeah. the person that's me, <laughs> you out. <laughs> There's an expiration date on everything, right? right? Like, And you got to know when it's time to be done. Right. And that's usually not about another person, an affair, uh -huh. or, uh -huh. you know, some chick that's willing to like make you feel like a king because that's right. why most men cheat. Most men cheat because that's, the that's so fascinating to me. It's so gross. It's so stupid. I personally, listen to my quote: and "Real yeah. niggas don't cheat." You don't think so? Hell no. I kind of understand what they you mean not. when you say that. They do not. I understand what you it's, mean it's, when you say it's that. It's something in us, yeah, that makes us want to be right, right yes. across the board. But is that so that you you are living up to the expectation that you've set for yourself? Because again, you're going back to your childhood wounds of right. trying to be perfect to, right. to receive the love from your mom? Or is, or is that really where you've landed that you want to be a man that does things the right way because you want to be honorable yes. and you want to respect the woman that you're with? Because those are two different things. I want to be honorable and I'm just... 
anybody that's real, and when I say real, I mean real with yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you, you're going to hold, there's a there's a sense of integrity there. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? In, in my life. God, what happened <laughs> to integrity? My, my life is built on integrity. Yeah. That's my moral compass. Yeah. If I'm not integral, I'm off. Right? Yeah. And for me, you know, doing the work is integral. Mm-hmm. Right. For me, coming forth and telling my truth is integral. Right. For me, taking the mask off and saying, you know what, even your favorite trapper's favorite trapper has flaws and things that he has to work through is yes. integral. Doing a versus battle in front of the world, they know that they know who you are and what you're capable of, and you t- taking another approach because you want to save lives is integral. That's yeah, that yeah. disruptive, not making the favorite or the most favorable choice because you know you have a position to play. So when I say well, that- it's I in mean, your purpose, right? Like yeah. when you're more in align with your purpose. And I swear to you that more than ever, yeah. I understand my purpose is walking in these footprints that God's left for me. And what is your purpose My now? purpose is to be the best version of myself mm-hmm. and to teach my culture everything that I learned along the way. Just like I did when I was in the streets and I made music. Now that I'm writing books, everything that I learned is in that book. Everything that you see me do um, in real life mm-hmm. is is my contribution mm-hmm. to the blessings that I have. Mm-hmm. Showing men that we can come from where we come from and still be integral, mm-hmm. still be solid individuals. Because I think what you're saying is we haven't seen enough examples of solid individuals. That's right. right? We, we don't have know, that roadmap. People is either yeah. one side or the other. It's like, you know, somebody's thinking for self. We're not thinking for we, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody's either trying to. And, and, and by the way, I had to go back and dial my ego all the way back That's down. That's the other thing we haven't talked about. Right. There's no space in any of what we're talking about for right. ego. Right. And if you're living by ego, you're basically trying to either A, control someone yes. or to get them to see life the way you see it. Yes. And I had to learn that that's not how you live life, right? And most of my ego came from fear. Absolutely. Right. There's good ego. Right. There's good ego that allows you to do this because mm-hmm. this is something new, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. There's good ego that allows you to be a disruptor. Yes. That's good ego. Because in disrupting the system, in disrupting what we're used to seeing, right. you're also providing a new way of doing things, right? It's hard though. Yeah, it's hard because you're 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 putting yourself in a position to be an example. Right. But but you're still learning and growing. And also you're putting yourself in a position to lose everything that you built because people can look at you and you know our culture. You can do one thing and they're like, Oh, we cool on him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just like I had to learn not to teach or, or to preach. You know, I'm not this role model. I'm just saying that when you come from where we come from, it's okay to evolve because at the end of the day, I don't want to be, I don't want my kids to think I was just a great artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm a great man. I'm a great person. You know, I'm a great mm-hmm. father. And, and That's I'm the more same guy. Than yeah, anything. because I was saying, God, to him, but real nigga, like all that. You no, know, you're all these things. I'm all the things. Right? I just said that to you and you looked at me like I was crazy. No, I was trying to figure out what things you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm all the things, right? Yeah. And I'm also somebody who's failed. I'm also somebody, somebody who's lost. I'm also somebody who uh, my life plays out in public a lot, right? And people always see the bad things. I'm always somebody who wants to do the right thing. And, and sometimes, you know, the, the masses don't want that, right? Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes, you know, I, I've been taught to keep your mouth closed and don't tell people anything, right? Especially how you live and how you move. Well, that's what we've all been taught. Right. And and now just opening up and having these conversations, you know, there's a lot of times where I'm just like, wow, like, you know, when you see people not getting the message right and you go, they just really don't understand. As Black people, this is a beautiful time for us to be inspired by each other. Right. To be able to say we no longer have to have this experience on this planet in this small vacuum right. where we are of service to the world. And when I say to the world, I mean to white pop culture. Right Now there are tools and examples and people and practices in place that can inspire us in a different way. When I was 
you know, nine years old wanting to be an actress. When I was little Nia, there were like very few people I mm -hmm. could look up to and mm -hmm. say, oh, that's who I want to be. Right. We've cracked that a little bit, right. a lot of it. Right. So now I think what you're saying is we all have the choice. We have the choice to decide when and where we're going to get the mental health support that we that we need. Mm -hmm. But you got to want it. And I think the stigma behind um, mental health, especially with black men, is huge. It's a weakness. It's a weakness. And the reality is, is your brain is a muscle like anything else on your body. Uh -huh. If you can go to the gym and lift weights, then you should be able to sit down with someone and exercise that muscle in right. between your ears right. and have those conversations because those conversations are tough, but they're also really necessary. Yeah, it's 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 hard though because I have, you know, I have people that I know look up to me that they really, you know, have been there with me through a lot of things. And I think they don't understand where you're at and where I'm going. It's like the disconnect is so real. And it's almost like there's only a chosen few people who understand what's really at stake. I was talking right. to a guy friend of mine a while ago and he said, Nia, and I was just complaining, 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 complaining. And I was like, what am I supposed to do? Like, you know, I love this person. And he said, everyone has a cap on their capacity. Mm -hmm. And if their capacity is full, you could be doing back flips, uh, front flips. You could be the best. The sex could be amazing. Mm -hmm. the, all these things mm -hmm. could be amazing in that relationship. But if that person's capacity and desire to grow isn't there, then you hit that wall. Yeah. And I'm not saying that everyone that hits the wall should give up. Right. I'm saying that if, if your partner hits the wall right. and you're not quite there yet right. in your personal growth, right. you have a big decision to make. If I'm ready and my partner's not, what happens? Well, how do you know she's not? Let's just say I knew. Like it wasn't, uh, what do I do? You're my sister right now. I'm your sister. Well, now you're giving me well, some, giving me some uh, advice. Hypothetically speaking. <laughs> well, you don't want my advice because my <laughs> advice is I'm out. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I don't give up easily. Right. I will never give up on someone I love. I don't care how high we are or how but low we are. That's how I feel about it. I love me now. Yeah. There's a point I didn't. So I never, I can't give up on myself. That's choosing yourself. Is that wrong? No. That's the ultimate freedom. The ultimate acceptance who you are now, where you are now. Mm. And where's that picture you showed me earlier? Oh yeah, yeah. Of you when you were younger. That's my guy right there. Smooth oh Jay, God. I talked Look to him all the time. So he was kind of cute, you know what I'm saying? He was cute, he's a cutie, 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 cutie patootie, you know what I'm saying? A little gangster, but, but he's good. <laughs> well, you gotta have a little gangster. It's boring if you ain't got no yeah. gangster. When you look at him now, uh -huh. what do you feel? Honestly, I'm gonna share this and I haven't shared it with anyone. I had a meditation where I, uh, I was in a deep meditation for like 45 minutes and I um, dozed off into this field, like it's like a field and it was like a old house in the middle of the field, like a, like a barn house. Mm -hmm. And I walked through the field and I walked in the house and there was a TV on, was playing cartoons. And I walked around the house. I didn't see anyone, went in the kitchen, went in the room, didn't see anyone. And something told me to go downstairs. Mm -hmm. And I walked downstairs mm -hmm. into the basement. Mm -hmm. It's kind of dark, a little light on in the corner. Couldn't really see much. And I walked around the basement and I ended up in the corner. Yeah. And I heard someone sniffling. I walked over and I said, hey, what's going on? And then he had his back to me. And I said, what's wrong, buddy? And he turned around and it was my younger self, the same face in his That's picture. That's amazing. And I said, what's wrong? He said that I'm, I'm tired of everybody. Like, he basically was trying to tell me he's tired of not being able to trust anybody and everybody doing them dirty. Dirty. Right? And he was crying and I was just looking at him. I said, it's okay now, I'm, I'm here, buddy. To protect self. And he said, 
you sure? I said, yes, I'm here. And he just looked at me, he said, you promise? And I said, yeah. And I said, give me a hug, man. And I literally, like, this is real talk, like I'm laying in my bed, right? I ain't cried since Tupac died, right? right? We all and I'm laying that in my bed awful. and I'm feeling tears roll down my face in my bed. Oh. And I looked at him and I said, I said, you're good, buddy. I'm, I'm here with you now. I got you. And then I said, uh, why are you in the basement? He said, because I was hiding. I said, well, what do you want to do, man? He said, I want to go play. I want to have fun. I said, well, let's go play then. So I took him upstairs. He ran outside, ran around the whole field in the yard, swinging on the chairs. I'm literally feeling myself go from tears to, 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 smi no, to smiling because he's happy. And we played all day, played till he got tired, and we went in the house, and we sat on the sofa, and he watched cartoons until he fell asleep. And, I, and I, he sat on my lap, laid like, way across, and in the middle of it, he just woke up, and he's like, I love you, man. And when I tell you... That was it for you. My, it's almost like my heart, it, like, explode, Like, whatever pain that was that in there... That you were carrying. It was like a million pounds lifted off my off my chest. And that moment, I just said, no matter what in life happens, I have to choose to take care of my inner child and take care of myself. And that's what I promised my mom when I wrote her that letter, when I went and sat with her at a grave site. And I just remember walking away from it. And I looked at my phone and I said, I did it for us, man. I did it for us, little Jay. And that was all I needed for me because that moment for me, my life has just been clear ever since. And I always put everybody else first. Me too. And I never put myself first. Never. You know, I know. And, and, I, and I've tried to love everyone that's came in my life. Mm -hmm. Everyone. Mm -hmm. Like the best way I could. Not to say that I know what love is or I know what these things are, but the best way I know how. Mm -hmm. And I always got the short end of the state. And for this one time in this one place, I chose myself. Our world, our people, they need to hear this shit. Absolutely. Like they need to know Absolutely. that, you know, that you, you don't have to be stuck in this place that this trauma and this no. pain and all these things want us to We're be stuck We're supposed to be living joy, living joyful joy. lives. Women are supposed to just be able to be feminine right. and soft, right. still be in your power, still right. be successful, right. still be mothers, professionals, famous, inf whatever it is. Right. We can be all of the things, right? And men should be able to be loving and not feel Absolutely. like they're going to get mas emasculated or, or these things because... And I just feel like if everybody took the time to look inward mm -hmm. and to work on themselves. In an honest way. You have to be honest. And I, I just feel like if we can do that as a people, we'll be in a better space. And I think for me, whew, it's risking a lot because, you know, anybody that would have been in my position that would have been thinking for self. And I, I think it's There's success. There's no way they would I think it's success when you accomplish what I accomplished. That's success. Yeah, right? yeah. But su success is for yourself. Significance is what it's about others. And I'm in a significant space right now. I don't know that I've ever had a conversation like this mm. with any man. Oh, wow. So to for you to say the words but still have this very masculine presence right. is kind of nice because it's like mm -hmm. it goes against what I think Women will be like, he's soft. I don't want, you know, because right. there are women out there that don't want that. 1,000%. Which I don't understand that. I think you want the balance, right? I think women want leadership. They want to feel protected. Do they want well, leadership? Well, it depends on the woman. Right, yes. <laughs> depends on the woman, right? Right. And it depends on where you're leading me. Because if you're right. leading me someplace where I don't want to go, then no. Right. We're not doing that. Right. But if I trust you. Well, where does the trust come into play? Well, you got to know each other. You got to be, you, you got to know each other. You have to be transparent. Absolutely. Open book. Are you able to forgive? Um, I started with myself, mm -hmm. my mother, mm -hmm. um, you know, some people in my family that some foul things happen, you know, as family, those things should happen, but I don't know how 
you forgive somebody who had a malicious intent. So in that moment where you are trying to really work through your own trauma, is it safe to say that it's healthy to say that person is where they are. I need to leave them there and forgive them exactly where they are and still love them where they are. Well, I can say this. Um, I've been through some shit. You know I'm not saying? laughing. I'm just like, with the way <laughs> you, you said laughing. that. <laughs> no, I'm definitely <laughs> laughing because you of the way you said it. Definitely laughing at me right now. See what I'm saying? Well, I'm we not, this is why we can't open up. This is up. why men can't open up. <laughs> this is why I should say shit. <laughs> I'm laughing because of your face when you said it. Was no, like I'm, I want to know what I know. I've been through. Just... I've been through some shit, and I've been through some shit with people I, I really love. What's I don't the think worst thing someone's to ever done to you? I mean, left me in my lowest. I thought I took care of him the whole time. Like you know. Uh, Cross me out. I mean, try to line me up, you know, get me knocked off. Uh, That's hardcore. Took from me, stole from me, uh, betrayed me. Uh, but you got to let all that go, have you? This is the thing I had to learn. And this is the part where it get a little tricky. Most time when people do something to hurt you, it's out of fear. Of course. Right. But I didn't understand that at first. I thought this was personal. Yeah. Right. Well, that's because we... Black people are raised that right. way. Like you think that's it's kind personal. of part like of our culture. You're trying to hurt me, so I gotta. I gotta hurt you back, um, or hurt you first. There's that, mm -hmm. and um, I think when I started to realize that it was out of fear, that softened the blow. But like, God damn, them niggas did me dirty, man. Like, they I just, did. Yeah, yeah, just like I don't understand it. That's good, right. That you have that still in you, because what, what, to me, what that's a part of who you are. You gotta always keep teeth. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta Grit. always keep teeth. Well, let me say this. The thing that I had to come to grips with is that no matter how dirty I feel like they've done me, they probably never thought about that another day in their life. It, did, it probably didn't even matter to them. It was business as usual. And the thing that I've been living with is the fact that every day, which has probably been for the last decade. You think about it. I think about it, and I'm the one that's being affected by it. You're hurting. I'm yeah. the one that's hurting. So to me, that I'm seems the like worst. the last thing that you need to reconcile. Yeah, that's that's the last piece. So we've talked about all of these things, all of these themes, all of these moments in your life, some moments in my own life, where you have made a conscious decision to move forward and to choose yourself. Right. Right? But we what we haven't talked about is your current marriage and your current situation. And I think it would be unfair to you to not address that in this space where we're being really open and honest. And mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be the details of anything. Right. But if you've done all of this work and you've given yourself that grace, and you've given yourself that space to grow, and you've given yourself permission to love self, right? Then what happens when a man gets to the point where they're just like, okay, I'm filing for divorce? Integrity, intact, I, I could never say anything that would just, not honor somebody. That, absolutely. But I can tell you that this has not been a easy journey. Um, I can tell you that I'm saddened. I can mm. tell you that I'm disappointed. I can tell you that I'm uneasy, mm. right? But again, like God has put me in a different path and that path is going to entail for me to take care of myself and to love myself and to be in the best situation that I can thrive as someone who's been through all the things that I've been through. It's kind of something you can't explain. Yeah, you can't. The real thing is like, you know, I don't like to fail in anything. Me either. You know, and, I don't want to lose. I don't want to fail. You know, I don't want to fail. Especially when I know what... You've poured in. Right. And, you know, as I sit across from you, like I can only be responsible for myself. True. You know, and I can only do um, what I can do. Right. And right I can't then. expect someone else to do what I'm doing. But did you go to therapy with her? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Right. 
So you actually addressed it, right. tried to work through it, mm -hmm. tried to do the work, mm -hmm. and it just was like not happening. You know. Well, then shit, you tried. Yeah. I don't know about for you, but for me, it is a switch. Right. And when that switch and goes that what off. You, that's, that was your switch? Go on. The, the, yeah. Right. But, you know, I had to, to realize for myself that anything that happened in the last, what was it, a year and a half of my right. life, that shouldn't have nothing to do with me. And that's, and that's my that point have of case. That didn't anything to do with me. Right. I was not embarrassed. Right. I was not, I was, I the way that black people stood up for me mm -hmm. and the way that black women were like, oh, no, you don't do that to her. Mm -hmm. I was shocked mm -hmm. because I didn't realize that what I had done or what I've done in my career had so much impact. You didn't realize No, it? not at all. And I'm not even being, like, funny. You, you're America's sweetheart. Like, it's crazy. Well, shit. <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> what the hell? You don't know that? <laughs> I don't. I do not. I don't regard myself in that way because right. it's always really about the work for me. Well, I'm gonna say this. I feel yeah. like I'm sitting across from you. Yeah. Which is why I wanted to have this conversation with you. Cause I wanna personally tell you yeah. that you embody yeah. what a well minded, grown ass black woman is supposed to be like. And we stand with you always. And the reason why I wanted to talk to you because you are my sister. And this is a safe space for me to say what I need to say. Because at times when we're at our lowest, we need our sisters. Just that's like right. you guys need your brothers. And that's why this conversation was so real because I hope and I pray that this conversation can open up different conversations in our culture about being there for each other and not being at odds with each other, no matter what we've been through. And, you know, I gotta give you your flowers. You know, you, you, you've done an amazing job in maintaining your integrity throughout your career, right? As a person, as a human being. And it meant the world to me to sit across from you and just to tell you my story. As a man, I just hope that women, our women, black women in particular, can see this yeah. and give us a safe space. Really women all the way across the board because we are men, we as men, like we hurt to be vulnerable to tell us, you know, your 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 partner that, you know, right now I'm, I'm in a bad so yeah, I'm in right a bad now. space. We going through it out here every day. You wouldn't even imagine, right? And there's no safe place for us to land. There's no safe place for us to have these conversations. We can't have it with our homies. We can't have it with our brothers and our partners because it doesn't it doesn't rest. It doesn't translate because they don't have life experience. Right. And they don't have that, that empathy there. Right. Yeah. They don't have that that mothering, that that nurturing thing. You know, and this is like for me, um, it's real because, you know, when you buried as many people as I have, right? Or seeing people go to prison for long periods of time, or just seeing people fall to the wayside, you know, they're all missing a certain element. And the element is to be able to have a safe space, the process. Because when you're in pain and you're in odds, and I've been in pain most of my career. Like, I've been the angry black man for sure. Really? Yeah, because I, I was just mad at either. the world. Because I'm yeah. like, why do I have to keep fighting these battles? Not that I'm not a fighter, right? No, we but, all are. You don't want to have to fight through it. It should right. be a joyful experience. And if you do, you want to be able to at least process with that with somebody who feels your pain and understands where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. And probably can give you some insight of what they think, but it's safe. And I feel like there's no safe spaces for us. And to ask you a question, I'm going to take your homework. I'm going to go home. <laughs> what did I'm I gonna, give you homework? Yeah, because I hear where you're going with this. I'm <laughs> going to write my list of people that I should forgive. Yeah. Right? And I'm going to forgive them. Because my sister told me that it's okay to do so. That's right. I hope they don't think I'm soft, but I'm doing it. You are not soft. Said I'm no, you so. got to, because otherwise we're caring. I need yeah. to write, listen, I need to write the list. Well, won't, we write a, won't you write your list and I'll write mine? Listen, right. I want to see whose list is <laughs> yeah, longer, because right. I got some shit on my list. Right. I don't know about yours. <laughs> I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for your energy. I want to thank you for your realness. Um, and I hope you understand how many lives this is gonna affect and change because I promise you, 
a lot of the anger and resentment and the dumb shit the men do is coming from a place of not being able to be seen or heard, right? We, we, we're Stare demonized. Back. And I can only imagine what it's like on the woman's side. But I hope that this will open up, you know, just that that dialogue of being able to talk to each other. And like you said, being on the same team mm-hmm. rather than fighting each other. Because I'm going through a real, real hard moment in my life. Like I felt it's something that I would have, you know, gave my life for it to work. The last question that I have is we have established that everything starts with love. Um, but I don't think we can grow into that real deep love and acceptance that this whole conversation has been about without forgiveness. So what do you do when you know you have to forgive someone? For me, I'll tell you what I do. Okay. When I know that I have to forgive someone, when I'm in my bed quietly meditating, I literally send them love vibrations. Uh, I literally send them, like visualize the person's face and I send them love vibrations because by me releasing love towards them, I no longer have to be connected to the negative feeling of being hurt and disappointed. I have actually sliced that, chopped that down. You don't have access to me. There may never be another conversation, but energetically, I know that I can send love to someone and it actually helps my healing. Now, whether they receive it or not, Mm -hmm. I don't really care. It's more for me. And sometimes we don't need an explanation from the other person as to why it's so important to forgive. But I promise you, you could do all this work that you're doing right now. We could do all these, this, have these conversations. If you are not able to forgive, you will hit the wall again. Oh, I'm going to say this. Um, And I received that. I don't know if I'm sending anybody love vibrations in my bed, <laughs> but what I will promise you, I will write that my list. That's funny. See, this is why I was saying, man. I read... No, because I was honest. You're like, no, I, I'm not sending no love vibrations because it ain't feeling like that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my list. Yeah. And I'm going to forgive. Yeah. But I'm not going to forget. But see, I'm looking in your eyes and I'm not really buying that. I'm going to forgive, I... <laughs> but I'm not going to forget. That's, that's, that's halfway, right? That's halfway. Okay. Thanks.